Hey, Jim Marsh Marty, signing in. Welcome to part 16 of the C++ and SML Tutor Platform tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going to finish out the Spire Mapper so that next tutorial we can get back working on the game again. So, let's get started coding. It's important to always stretch out your fingers before you start coding. Okay, so the first thing we are going to need is we're going to actually need a different sprite, a completely different sprite. So we're going, to, we're going to want to use it to find the X and Y location. So I'm going to be using Paint on it. You can use whatever image manipulation program you want. You can really use GIMP, you can use MS Paint, you can use whatever you want. But an important thing is it has to have an alpha channel, which is basically it has to have some transparency. So we're going to create file new. We're going to want this file to be 15 pixels by 15 pixels. The color we're going to use is just a nice looking red. But then with that red, you're going to hit that more button on that color wheel. And we're going to want to give it a bit of a alpha value, a bit, a bit tr slightly transparent. We don't want to, we don't want it to block out everything that we can see here. But before we start drawing anything, let's delete the background a second. Pick that magic wand or actually just go control all to select, hit that delete button and delete that background. Now using the pencil and using that nice transparent red that we just created, we're going to want to create a line that goes all the way down to the bottom and all the way across the bottom. So then we want to save that. So we're going to save this. Again, we want to go to a project directory that's, and we're going to want to go into our data folder, images right there. And we're going to save this here. We can call this target because we this is kind of like a target or crosshair or whatever. So we'll just save that as is. So now we want to load the image. So go into your main CPP file. So right after you load up the first texture, we're going to load up another one. So we can do it right before game clock. That's a good little spot right here. So again, just type texture to access the texture class and we can call this texture here texture 2 hit enter texture 2 and then dot load from file this here is just a basic function that loads up a file and assigns it to our texture object and open up a string and inside that string we're going to provide the path for where this file is located which ours is located in data images and then it was target i believe it is dot p and g so end that line with a semicolon and hit new line. So now we want to create a sprite. So I'll access the sprite class with just sprite. And then you want to, we're going to call this sprite here target sprite because it's just the target that's going to go in the corner. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute here of what this is actually all about. So in that, and then do you want to give it some parameters? The parameters we're going to give it is the actual texture we're going to give it. So the texture we're going to give it is texture two, not the first one, the second one. And then I want to semicolon, except we also want to scale this texture to the to the same amount that this last texture right here is scaled. So just access that texture's name or the sprite's name, which is target sprite and then dot set scale. Or actually just scale will work fine, actually. Open parameters, parameters are gonna give it is how far, how much we're gonna scale it by, which is just the zoom scale. And of course, keeping it exactly the same, the zoom scale for the X and Y. So all good for that. Scroll up a little right here. We've already created some X and Y positions. We're gonna want to create some some width positions and some height positions so that we can figure out the width and height of our texture or our sprites so you can actually just take those lines out we're not going to need them anymore we're going to need a few new lines so int and w position that's what we're going to call it set that equal to zero for now and create another integer and you can call this one h position and you can set that equal to zero as well then you're going to create another float our float is just basically as a decimal point to it so it's a number with a decimal point and we can call this right one right here h velocity set that equal to zero for now as well and create another float and we're going to call this float here you guessed it h velocity and set that equal to zero as well in the line of semicolon so that's about all the variables we're going to need so now we want to scroll down into our while window dot is open. Now we actually want to use the variable. So right here in if your our if keyboard logic, if you're pressing the left shift key, we're going to, want to create a few more if statements. Starting with if, open some parameters. The parameters we're going to get is keyboard, two colons, is key pressed. And this is yours just testing for key presses. And then opens the parameters it'll automatically open is key and you want to go with keyboard. And then the key we're going to be dealing with is W for now. So, so then you're going to want to open up the body of the if statement, which is just when you open up some squirrel braces. And inside here, if you are pressing the W key, we're going to want to set the H value. So the H velocity. And we're going to want to set that equal, keep it consistent with the rest of them when you're pressing shift. And we'll just go with 0 0.25. And I just noticed a little bug here. For some reason, when we're pressing down, it's going to be 
setting your RY velocity to 0 0.55, not matching up with other ends. So you can set that 55 to a 25, like it should be. So I'll end that line with a semicolon. Don't want to create any problems with the compiler there. And then we can just copy and paste this. Control C. Copy and paste it actually four times. That's how many times we're going to need it. And now in the second one right here, we're going to want to go instead of W, we're going to go with S. And instead of a positive number, we're going to want to go with a negative number. Or actually, we want to go with it this way. Negative up here, positive down there, positive down there. And right down here in the third if logic here, we're going to want to go with the Y velocity. I mean W. Mm, chunk of carrot in my mouth. Tasty. And then the third if logic right here, we're not going to want to deal with that H velocity. We're going to go with deal with the W velocity. And instead of we're going to be testing for not a W press, we're going to start with a D press. And down here, instead of a D press, a W press, we're going to go with an A press. And again, we're going to replace this with a W and set that equal to negative value. So it should all look like that. All the replacements should look like that. So now you can copy all that. Control C to copy. Scroll down some. And you can paste that all right here in this else logic. So if you if he's not pressing the shift key, then everything's going to happen at the normal pace. So replace that with a one, place that with a one as well, place that with a one, and replace that with a one. We have assigned the h velocity and the w velocity to a value if you are pressing them. But now we want to give them a value if you're not pressing any of the WASD keys. So we're going to create an if statement right here. So we'll just go if, open some parameters, parameters we're going to give it. So we're going to be testing for not a non-key press, keyboard, two colons, and then is key pressed. And then open some parameters, it are actually already should automatically open the parameters, depends on your IDE. Keyboard and two colons. And the keyboard we're going to be testing for is W. Make sure you're inside the last parenthesis. And then what we want to do is open up the AND operator. The way the AND operator is, it's basically saying, Okay, so for this chunk of code, whatever I'm going to say, both these conditions have to be true. Otherwise, this code won't run. So that's the little AND operator. I'm, I think you can actually just write AND. We're going to look cool. We're going to impress our friends. We're going to go with the two AND marks. Open up the NOT operator, which is just the exclamation mark. Those parameters, keyboard, and the unary scope resolution operator. And then is key pressed with a capital K. Key pressed. And then keyboard again, once more. And the key we're going to be dealing with is S. So if you're not pressing the S key and you're not pressing the W key, what's going to happen? Well, we're going to want to set the the H velocity back to zero. So that you're not going to be moving any if you're not pressing any of those keys. So we'll just write W velocity. And I'll set that equal to zero. Now on the semicolon, copy that code there. Control C. Favorite programmers button is that control C button. So let's paste that in, enough talk, talk is cheap, show me the code. Quoted by Linus Trevalds. So instead of a W, we're going to test for D and A. So if you're not pressing the A or D keys, then we're going to want to set the H velocity. Or actually, I got that backwards. It should be W for there, H for there. So that should all work good. So we're going to change our sprite's position, and we actually want to draw too. So I'll scroll to right down here. After the window clears, we're going to go window dot draw to draw something on our window when it's premise premise you want to give it is the sprite you want to draw so our sprite was target sprite i believe it was that's all you need for premise and the line with the semicolon and then we want to actually move our sprite so now we actually want to move our sprite so to move it you just type the sprite's name once more target sprite dot move not two dots not dot 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 either just one dot dot move the premise we're going to give it is the first we're going to start with the uh, width velocity so y velocity multiplied times the frames per second which is just to time it out so it's not going way too fast h velocity multiplied again by fps so you just compile and run it and failed to load an image reason unable to open the file so slight little error let's see what we have uh date there is no date folder there's a date uh folder so i can't actually see our sprite so let's move around okay there it is just playing peekaboo hiding behind our sprite so it's not layering correctly but that's not too hard to fix just scroll on down and we want to go we want to it draws it in the order that you tell it to so that's actually really useful so it goes first is right now it's drawing the, the target sprite so then after that it's drawing the sprite sheet we don't want that to happen we want to 
draw the sprite sheet, well, the target sprite here last, so that it will always be on top of all the other sprites. So paste that in there, save that minor little glitch. So it's on top now, so that's how we want it and everything. If we move it around, it's actually moving around exactly the way we want it. If we press shift and use the WASD keys to move it around, it's moving around again too. So the way it's gonna work is we go here, okay, we get it all lined up all perfectly, then we move this, going all perfectly, hit the space button, and then we have the x and y coordinates and the width and height coordinates but it's kind of hard to distinguish this between the back black background and between the brown dirt so we're going to want to fill the background with a color and actually one of you guys in the comments asked you how you do do it so we're going to do that today to do it in the window.clear statement right here in this little line of code we're, you can actually just give it some parameters you can give it a color parameter open some parameters inside there some parameter inception Ooh, parameter within parameter to figure out what the parameter is, is, is this is the RGB coloring system. So you can almost open up any image editor. I've just got MS Paint here. So I want to I want to go with a nice looking color. So this blue looks pretty solid looking to me. I think I'm going to go with that. So then you should see these little three, three little numbers here are red, green, and blue. So that is where we're going to copy in that order. So that's how you can figure out the RGB coloring system. This, you can fiddle around with all that, go with different ones. You can see the numbers change as you change the color. So close out all of that, and now if we run this, we should have a nice looking color. And we do, we have a nice looking blue in the background. So the reason that we made our little line here transparent was so that we could see if we are on top of a sprite or not. So if, here we can clearly see that we are, well, not really clearly see, but we can almost see that we're on top of the sprite here. So a little bit of a preference here, we're going to actually want to go to that image. We're going to select all of this, delete it again, and we're going to click that more button. We're gonna go slightly more transparent. So there we go. So save that. Okie dokie. It actually looks a lot better. It's a bit light to see. But first, we're gonna to want to assign some values to our W position and our H position. So right here, we're gonna go 8 W position equals, and it was target sprite dot get position. So this is just to get where exactly this is on the screen. And we're gonna to wanna to go with X for that one and H position. Not capital, mind you. Equals target sprite once more. There we go. And in the line of the semicolon. So now we have an X and Y position of our secondary sprite, which is just a little target. So now we want to actually use it. So in our if in our keyboard logic right here, if you hit space, we're going to also output a few additional values. And I actually just notice another error right here is we're dividing the zoom scale by seven. But I'm not sure about the logic behind that. But what we're, I'm pretty sure what we're meaning is we wanted to divide the Y position by the zoom scale actually the negative zoom scale. fix that little glitch on the go while we're at it so now we're going to want to space this out quick second make it look nice add a comma and a space and then open up to greater than signs or is it less than signs i forget and then you want to go just make sure it looks like that and we're going to open up some parameters because calculation that is in the innermost parentheses will be done first so for the for very first thing that we want to do is we want to divide the H position or whatever it was. The, we're going to start with the W position. We're going to divide that by, what was it, the zoom scale. And zoom scale. And then after that, we're going to want to add 15 pixels onto it. Because we don't want to go with the top left hand corner of the screen. Or left should be over here on the camera. Over here. But anyways, we don't want to go with the top left hand corner of the screen. We want to go with the top or the bottom right hand corner of the screen. So that's why we add 15 pixels onto it after. And this is actually getting pretty long. So we're going to end this. We're going to end that line code right here. We're going to have an end line. End that line of semicolon. And then we're going to go file. And then carry on writing to the code right here. Because that was a pretty long line of code. And open up string. And just add a comma. And hit space. And then open up two of those more of those signs. Most parameters, parameters we want to give is just h position divided by the zoom scale, and then after that we're going to want to add 15 to it as well. Added by 15 and more two more of those signs. So save that, give it a go. At the end of the day, this here right there should be 50 pixels, and I'll bet you a loony that it's going to be 50 pixels. Oh, 50, 50 pixels. So our program is pretty much complete. But the last thing we want to do is just clean up the uh, clean up a few bugs and glitches. One of them is that we forgot to. When you, we zoom in on the sprite, we also want to zoom in on our target sprite as well. So we're going to need to go into our Ken zoom right here. And what we're also going to want to set the scale of our target sprite. Because otherwise, it's, it's going to 
gibble it's gonna gibble our measurements so and we want our measurements to be exact so we'll just replace that with target sprite and I'll, and then you can just copy and paste that line there control c and paste it down the line below that so the last thing that we do when we're done any code is we just take a quick look over the code make sure it's a nice readable code we can see already that it's just preference really right here we have w velocity we have a big v there and then we have a small v right there so we would always want to keep our coding style consistent especially if you have a code checker some professional code checkers they get they're really seriously picky about that sort of thing and also some integers that can be constant you probably want to leave them as constant so we're not going to be changing the w window width of our window and we're going to be windy changing the height of the window either so we're just going to set those as constant integers and then we just want to scroll down and wherever we had x val and y val we just want to replace that v with a big v i'm just going to scroll down through the code quick second here I'm just going to scroll down so that you guys can make sure that you got everything and all matches up just the same so all, at the end of the day, all of this should look like this. I don't think that there's any bugs in my code. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions, comments about C++, leave that down in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing and watching. I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas. Speaking of Christmas, we had one cold one, eh? I think right on Christmas Day is when it all really got cold. It went right all the way down to minus 37 Celsius. I'm not sure what that is, fair enough, but that's pretty cold. When it's minus 21st Cadence, we can still play hockey and everything, but... When it's minus 37, then we just put on an extra coat. Alrighty, so I'll see you in the next video, and Asian Mario.